it's Applement. Welcome back again to my channel. So this week I was really in the mood to paint. I wanted to create a bigger piece of art because lately I've been doing a lot of character drawings and like smaller artwork and I wanted to create something a little bit bigger. Something that would kind of be a good break in between my con prep and prep for my new Kickstarter that's coming up. So I really wanted to do something that was just relaxing and uh, I could just kind of be as creative as I wanted with it and do whatever. So for today's video, I'm gonna be doing a spring watercolor painting, specifically cherry blossom inspired. I was sitting and sketching the other day on my iPad Pro and uh, I was trying to think of some different things I wanted to do. So I started by just kind of sketching a face because I, you, as you guys know, I've said, I really do like doing uh, portraits and things like that. And those I find the most relaxing when I just wanna be creative and draw whatever. So I wanted to create a portrait. I wasn't sure what, but I knew I wanted it to be spring-like and cherry blossom just kind of came to me as I was sketching. And so I have the process playing here so that you guys can see how I went about sketching it real quick. And like I said, I've really been liking doing my thumbnails in Procreate lately just because I find it so much easier than uh, I don't know, sketching on a piece of paper because I can change things around a lot easier, play with colors a lot easier and all that. So I like doing that before I begin. So the watercolors that you're going to see me using in this video are the Turner Artist watercolors. I got them off of jerrysartorama.com. You guys know I like to buy my Copics on there. So these were off of that website as well. And uh, I've never used this brand before, but I figured now would be a good time to try out these watercolors because I haven't done a watercolor piece in a little while and I really wanted to make something nice. So there are 18 colors in this set. As you can see, they are in tubes and I, when I normally paint, use the ones that are in the little pans already, the little squares of watercolor. Um, but I've not really, I, I've used tubes a few times. I have some of the Arteza ones that I've messed around with, but I haven't done a full, full piece with them. And so I wanted to just try something different for this video. Uh, the watercolor tubes I'm definitely not used to because you have to kind of play around with the ratio of paint a little bit more, whereas uh, when you have the ones in the little square pans, you can just kind of rehydrate them and the paint's already there for you. Whereas these, it's like, uh, I wasn't sure at first how much to put. I don't want to waste paint. I think I did end up wasting a little bit of paint, but this is kind of trial and error. I think we're gonna watch some tutorials uh, to kind of know what the ratio of paint should be. And so uh, for these, you'll notice I, that in my drawing, I wanted to include a lot of pink, and I don't have a pink in here, but you know what, that's fine, because I'm, I, like I said, I'm used to having those little pans, and they already, uh, usually the sets I have include a lot of colors, and so normally pink is in there, or some shade of magenta is in there, uh, so for this video, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna have to mix red, maybe a little bit of purple to get the shade I want. Uh, at first, I mixed it a little too dark, which was fine, but, um, I had to do some playing around with the colors there to kind of get the shade I really wanted. I ended up going with the purplish reddish shade really diluted for the hair to make kind of like a dusty rose color. And then I uh, did the red with a lot, a lot of water and then also a little bit of the white in here uh, for a nice light cherry blossom like pink that I used for the cherry blossom details on her. And uh, so yeah, mixing these colors was pretty simple once I got the hang of it, but the first time I put some of the red down, I was like, oh, that's too much, way too much. Um, but for this drawing, I really wanted to just, like I said, I just wanted to paint something. I wanted it to be something that I could relax and just kind of keep adding details to. I stuck pretty closely to my original concept that I did in the Procreate version that I drew. and. Um, I noticed that after, I guess after I did a lot of the details on here that I was like, wait a minute, I guess I could have added more shading. Like as I was painting, I thought that I was like, for example, on the skin, I thought I was adding more shading, more depth. And I kind of realized, well, I, after it dried down, I was like, well, I think it's, I don't know, it kind of lightened up. It didn't shade as much as I had thought it did. I think some of the reason why I thought it was darker was because it was more wet. And so uh, once it dried down, it was lighter. I didn't actually put as much pigment in there as I thought. So that's something I think I need to work on for the next time is just trying to improve my coloring style and my shading in terms of watercolors in general. Uh, but I was pretty happy with how the hair came out. Like I said, what, like 
I've said this in the past, when I do watercolor, I kind of see it as one of those mediums where you can be more creative, you can be more, I guess, liberal with the color, with the paint, and you can make some mistakes and it'll still be fine. Because when you use things like markers, like Copic markers, if you make a mistake or you color outside the lines or you color over into another section by accident, uh, say, you know, say I colored with blue into an area that's supposed to have the skin tone on it, I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not a lost cause because you can remedy some of that with colorless blender, but for the most part, you can't really fix mistakes as easily or hide mistakes as easily as you can with watercolor, at least in my opinion. Uh, if things get a little bit more messy when I'm watercoloring, I find that, you know, you can push things around with the water a bit more, you can dry it with a paper towel, or if some areas leak into others, I kind of like the look. I don't mind it when the watercolor is kind of all over the place sometimes because I think it make, makes it look a little bit more natural and painty, which is a look that I sometimes find difficult to get when I'm using my uh, my markers just because I find, I find that those look a lot more finished, whereas watercolor, I kind of like the rough look. So that's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing watercolor. I just like that I can be creative and if I make little mistakes, it adds to the look that I like for the painting anyway, so that's why I feel like I can just have fun with it. And when I do watercolors, I i mean for this one I sketched it in a pink colored pencil. Or, well, I used a pink, uh, a pink lead pencil at first and then my lead like got stuck in the pencil and like wasn't coming, I could not get the lead out for the life of me basically through the end of it. And I tried to add more, I tried a different pencil, like it was just giving me all kinds of issues. So I started using a pink colored pencil to sketch everything out. And I like sketching really light for watercolor and then doing the outlines afterward, uh, just because, I don't know. Then I like to add the colored outlines. I don't always like to outline it in black because I find that makes it look really harsh. And watercolor, like I said, I like it to be very painty and very uh, flowy. And so I feel like black kind of takes away from that a little bit sometimes. So for this painting, I wanted to keep it light. And so I went in with a set of water, uh, sorry, not watercolors, a set of colored pencils. And I just started outlining in colors over the painting once it was dry. Um, and this was also one of the first paintings that I actually ended up taping down with painter's tape. Normally when I paint, I just kind of go for it. And I was watching a watercolor video a few weeks ago and I thought to myself, she, was, she had it all taped down and she's like, yeah, you gotta tape your watercolor paper down because you don't want it to um, like get all bumpy and creasy. And this paper still did get a little creasy, but it was way better than what it normally is when I normally paint. So this is the thing that I'm going to be doing from now on whenever I do a watercolor painting, just because stretching the watercolor paper made it so much better to, to paint. I hope you guys enjoyed my rambling about my painting process here and some of the things I was thinking as I was going. This week's video, I really just wanted to do a painting. I didn't want to do any kind of challenge, none of that kind of stuff for this week. So I hope you guys enjoy the painting that I created for today's video. I, I really like the way it came out. Like honestly, it's not perfect, but it's, it's what I wanted for this week. And I wanted something pink and bright and fun and spring-like. And so yeah, this is the finished piece. These watercolors were pretty cool. And I... I mean, I don't know them, you know, enough yet to really recommend them, but I would like to keep trying them for watercolor pieces. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite thing about spring is. My favorite thing is definitely all of the flowers and just the feeling of the air kind of being a little bit warmer and not freezing as much as it is in the winter time. As I mentioned briefly earlier, I actually am launching a Kickstarter tomorrow. It's a Pokemon inspired enamel pin kickstarter called PokePals. I'm also going to have stickers and bags releasing with it So if you're interested in anything like that go check it out You are not at all obligated to pledge but just take a look or share it on social media That really is a big help honestly if you can't pledge sharing it is You're my best friend. I love you if you do that So as always all of my links are in the description box below I have a link to my online shop below where you can find my charms pins prints, all that stuff that I create is down there. I also have the link to my Instagram where you can follow me to see more of my artwork, behind the scenes things, and stuff that I don't always post here on the channel. And then lastly, I have my Amino linked below. You can join the Applement official Amino. You can post your artwork there, chat, 
make friends, whatever you want. And you can also join the Applement fan club if you want to support me more directly and also have access to fan club exclusive contests and different content like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys all next week, 4 p.m. Friday, as I always do for my videos. And if any of you are going to Castle Point Anime Convention, I will be there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.